to make the pH adjusted water, we're going to add 10 milliliters of acetic acid, glacial acetic acid, to a liter of water. We want to do this in the fume hood or outdoors because uh, it's pretty stinky. Uh, we also want to wear proper protective equipment when handling the concentrated acids and bases. So there's 10 milliliters of glacial acetic acid. And that's ready to go. Now we also want to make the ammonium hydroxide solution, the 10% ammonium hydroxide solution. So we'll just rinse this out. Obviously we don't want the acetic acid mixing with the ammonium hydroxide in concentrated form. So here we have 180 mils of deionized distilled water in our graduate. And we'll take 20 mils of the ammonium hydroxide. This is the concentrated ammonium hydroxide. So it's 27% ammonia gas dissolved in water. We're going to use 10% ammonium hydroxide to neutralize. And in that case, what I mean is 10% of what's in the bottle to water, not a 10% ammonia gas in water. So this is 20 mils to a final volume of 200. We can now pour this 10% uh, ammonium hydroxide solution into a beaker or some other container. And this is much safer and certainly doesn't smell as bad, and we can use it in the general st studio environment. So here's our 10 mils of glacial acetic acid and a liter of water. Put in our stir bar. Start it stirring. Now we're going to add the 10% ammonium hydroxide to this until we get the pH of 6.0. We have the pH meter in tap water, blot, distilled water, blot, and into our acetic acid solution. And we're going to start adding the ammonium hydroxide. You'll see that initially there's little or no change in the pH. Um, we're going to want to add about 100 mils of the ammonium hydroxide, so I'm just going to dump in a bunch to start with. We've added enough ammonium hydroxide to get the pH kind of close to where we want to go. We want to slow down the addition of the ammonium hydroxide. The pKa for acetic acid is 4.76, so its buffer range is about 3.5. 7 to 5.7. So we're kind of just outside the buffer range. So as we get to 6, we'll be outside the buffer range. So as we're adding ammonium hydroxide, the pH will change very quickly as opposed to what we saw a minute ago, where it takes a lot of ammonium hydroxide to change the pH. So we'll start adding kind of a squirt by squirt. And as we get closer, we'll even go by drop by drop. And you can see as we're at the tail end of that buffer range, we're really just taking a very small amount of the ammonium hydroxide to get to our final pH of 6.0. So we now have the pH set to 6. We'll want to check the conductivity. Go back into the tap water. So we'll use our calibrated Horiba. This is the more expensive conductivity meter. And we can just put the sample in the little sample well.
Okay. And we have a reading of 10.5 millisiemens. So that's 10,000 microsiemens. And we want a final conductivity of 6,000 microsiemens. So we have to dilute this down. Remember that, well, ionic strength is linear with dilution. Conductivity isn't. So to go from 10 to 6 will probably be more than doubling the volume of the water. So we'll start with maybe another 500 mils and see where we are. And we can kind of rinse the meter and take a new reading at the same time just by kind of squeezing some stuff in there, some solution in there, and get another reading. So now we're at 8.4. We'll continue diluting down until we get to 6.0 microsiemens. And this is distilled or deionized water. Obviously, if we're controlling the ionic strength, we want to have water with essentially no ionic content. So we're at 7.6 now. Seven point one, six point six, and honestly, the final reading isn't that critical. Six point six would be just fine, but let's see if we can get a little closer. Five point seven, again, close enough to the 6,000 microsiemens. Now that it's stirred a little bit more, we're at 6.4, add a little bit more. So if you don't have a conductivity meter, you can use the volumes given in the technical notes that have been published for the CAPS workshops. The other thing is you don't have to use necessarily a $200 meter. You can use the much cheaper meter sold for home use. Um, this reads in microsiemens or millisiemens as well. You don't want to get the meter that reads in total dissolved sol solids or TDS. And same idea, we put that in, we calibrate, um, and we get a reading, in this case, of 5.8, 5,800 microsiemens, which is, again, close enough to what we got with the other meter. This meter is probably better. This is a whole lot cheaper. That's that.